Konnichiwa. So here we are, finally, we're talking about a real transistor. So this is within the roadmap of the course. Uh, we're here now talking about bipolar junction transistor. Uh, we'll start, of course, with the equilibrium today and then go into some DC uh, band diagrams and DC characteristics. And as we do that, we'll uh, uh, remind ourselves that we have uh, covered the Schottky diode, that, which is a majority carrier device, and we'll refer very strongly back to the PN diode, uh, both in its equilibrium uh, behavior and its DC characteristics, and we'll be using a lot of the equations that were derived from uh, for the PN diode here in the bipolar junction transistor. And um, that is because those devices are really strongly related. Uh, we'll talk about the circuit models, why there is a diode-like symbol in here. So let's dive in and lay out uh, this section. So I'll introduce the device and we'll draw a band diagram. Then we'll look at some currents. And then there's something called an Ebers small model that describes the currents uh, very well in this device. Of course, here is the uh, maybe most famous transistor picture that's out there. It's a germanium point contact transistor. And uh, really, it's a, a pretty interesting device. And if you look at it in more detail, it's an, uh, a, a device that uh, is a bipolar device. It has an emitter, a base, and a collector. And interestingly enough, uh, these um, uh, emitter and co uh, collector are connected by a flat base like this. So this is very different than how we have planar devices today. And uh, we'll go into some more detail. Of course, here's the famous picture uh, that was staged in Bell Labs, um, where you have Bardeen, Shockley, and Wal uh, Walter Bretain at Bell Labs. And um, there's some interesting stories about all of this. Um, these guys were not the first ones to work on transistors. There was a race on at the time. And um, there happens to be a person at Purdue that was uh, pretty close as well. There was strong semiconductor device research at the time at Purdue, uh, right after the war, Second World War. And of course, there was a lot of transistor work also going on in, ra uh, in Europe, uh, aiming for radar. So. Uh, these devices needed amplification. You wanted to do um, uh, um, AC applications, uh, sending out signals over the air. So we'll cover a lot of this uh, capability and the performance of these transistors. But let's get started on just some simple introduction. So Shockley actually had a very different design in mind. It's actually looking like this, where you have a um, bipolar transistor. And then instead of just having a PN junction, you have multiple uh, diffused uh, regions. And uh, if you take a cut in one dimension, it's an NPN device in this form. Typically, you dope the emitter uh, very heavily. So that's called an N plus. Then there is a base region P, uh, which uh, regulates the current flow in this transistor. And then there's a collector that's doped in N. And uh, if you look at this three-dimensional object, you see you have to uh, connect uh, metal on, at the end. You have to have contacts. So really, the emitter is on top here. And then the base uh, connects through here. So there's effectively two contacts in this two-dimensional plot. And we'll see how this might look in three dimensions. And uh, then there is a collector that is underneath, and underneath you still have to have a, an almost metal-like uh, semiconductor, which is also then again in N+, plus, which would correspond in our 1D cut to this region way down here, okay? And then you would collect the current at the, at the bottom in, in a way, okay? So this is called a double diffused uh, bipolar junction transistor. Uh, today's transistors look way more complicated. Um, they're epitaxially grown, there's all kinds of interesting layers, there's some very interesting designs, and we'll cover uh, multiple aspects of these designs, and so you'll gain some fundamental understanding on how this device works. Uh, one is interesting here, um, there's something called a dielectric trench that isolates one transistor 
from the neighboring transistors in, in a way in an island. So you have many of them sitting in the same plane, but they don't talk to each other uh, via connection here. But on the bottom, again, you have um, an, the collector in N+, plus, that's really a base layer. And on top of that, you have the, uh, the emitter that we'll be ending up designing. And in here, really tiny in the middle, you might have a silicon germanium base. And then the, you typically have a poly uh, emitter that we'll talk about also in um, the next section of this course, not, inter uh, not in the introduction section here. All right, in, if you look at SEM images, you can begin to identify some of these features on this sketch. The point is, these are realistic devices that we're talking about. They're still in use very much today, typically for antenna applications where you need to get uh, a high gain uh, to connect uh, to radio signals going in and out of your uh, cell phone. So, uh, then the question is, of course, why do we have to have all this complicated stuff? And so we'll, we'll step through that in the next section. We'll start out with uh, some fundamentals first. How does this stuff work? All right? Okay, so let's uh, let a couple of uh, symbols and convention uh, be named here. So uh, typically we might have an emitter that is in poly, poly uh, silicon. We won't touch it right now. Let's just call it an N plus emitter. That's typically a low doped base. And then there's a collector uh, at the bottom here uh, who is uh, doping is also being optimized. And we'll, in the next section, talk about optimizing dopings, etc., in all of these uh, three regions and look at the performance. Uh, but uh, let's just define at first that you have three terminal currents here, an emitter current, a base current, and a collector current. By notation, they're pointing outward of the device. So that's just a notation, positive current coming out and they all add up to zero, meaning you're not adding uh, carriers um, to the system. Whatever you pump in on one end has to come out on the other end. And also all the applied voltages as defined sum up to zero. Okay, so that's just a, a, a standard definition that will also follow here in this course. There's a symbol definition. There is something called a sketch here, an NPN transistor. And um, what you see here is uh, with a collector on top, there's a base contact here. And then you see this little squiggle here, an arrow pointing out from the base to the emitter. And that is really reminiscent of this PN diode here. Okay, So this is uh, effectively the PN diode that you have built in. And that's the, the symbol that you're paying homage to here. Now, if you reverse uh, the polarity of the doping, and you can have a PNP device, and that is just as valid of a transistor, has different functions, and we won't talk about it much here in the introductions, but obviously you can create it just as well. And all you do is, in the notation, you reverse the arrow here. All right. So, again, just uh, as a reminder, this is the symbol of a PN diode, so, so here we are. And you can think of these transistors as two PN diodes back to back. And you have a contact here in the middle region. Okay, But we will use a lot of the analytics, a lot of the expressions we derived for a single PN diode now on this bipolar junction transistor. Okay, so here we go. Uh, that's the brief interim. Now we're going to start drawing a band diagram in equilibrium. Okay, I'll see you at the next section.